or welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in to another video. This video is going to be a Q&A. So I put up a question box on my Instagram stories last week asking for questions for this video. So I'll try and get through as many of them as possible. Um, I've got them all on my laptop here so if I keep looking that way that's why as I'm still filming it on my phone. And I've set myself a 25 minute timer just so I don't start talking for hours. And if I don't get through all your questions, then I'll definitely do them in a part two. Also, if you're able to see the strange kind of color of my skin right now, um, it's because I tried a new fake tan on my face, which I don't know why I did it because I've got quite sensitive skin and I get real dry spots. But I just tried the Bondi Sands one because I use that on my body and it's always absolutely fine. And I saw that they brought out a new one for your face. So I tried it and because obviously I've got dry patches, it just soaked in and it's got all patchy and horrible. But anyway, yeah, just in case you can see, hopefully you can't. Anyway, first question. So what was the hardest part about gaining weight? I have actually just done a video all about gaining weight and how I dealt with this. But for me, the hardest part probably was, to be honest, completely honest, was seeing the weight go around my stomach a lot initially. So I think this happens to most girls, particularly when they increase their calories by quite a large amount quite quickly, that the weight often does go around your middle. And it's just where women tend to, a lot of the time, put on weight. So yeah, so for the first two or three months of me gaining weight, I felt like it was just all going to my stomach. And it, to be totally honest, it was hard when you've gone from having abs, being very lean, to definitely not having abs, and just feeling quite bloated and puffy and, you know, podgy and all those kind of things. And I still do feel that now, to be honest. I still sometimes catch myself looking at myself in a negative way and thinking negative thoughts, particularly about my stomach. But I've also learned that actually, that is just a byproduct of the positivity of getting my period back, having more energy, feeling healthier. So it's totally worth it and I'm totally cool with it. And I think I'm getting more and more accepting of it. And definitely the weight has started to distribute more evenly across my body. So initially it did go all to my stomach. And then I'll say now it's in the past sort of two or three months, it started to even out a little bit more. But that that was definitely the hardest part for me. Did you have extreme hunger? So I guess it's a subjective one, extreme hunger, because I think what one person can feel as extreme hunger will be very different for another. But from my perspective, I would say I went through periods of time of having extreme hunger. So I would say within the first three weeks of increasing calories, I, I definitely had days where I just felt like I was just really, really hungry all the time. I was just pretty much eating the whole day. It's actually quite tiring um, to just continually eat for a whole day. But it, yeah, I definitely had days like that. And I think initially it was because my body had been so used to being in probably what was a maintenance slight deficit for a long time that going from having 2,000 calories to 2,500 calories, my body was almost like, yes, this is what I need. And I think it almost, you know, my metabolism probably sped up, all sorts of things that were going on because of the increased calories that I think it just made me, my body crave even more and more of those. So definitely in the first couple of weeks of increasing calories, I definitely had days where I would say I had extreme hunger. And then I've noticed it again, probably, two or three days before my period, I get real extreme hunger. And I can't remember if I used to get that pre-pill, but it's just unreal. I can always tell when I'm about to get a period because I have two days where I just, I'm, I'm starving. I'll eat a meal and feel like I've not eaten anything. So. so yeah, I definitely had days like that. And for me, I just went with it because I knew that's what my body needed and wanted. And I still do now. So those days before my period, I'll just eat whatever I want and just accept that. When you started feeling gains, how did you push through? So I presume by feeling gains, that kind of means feeling the weight gain. How did I push through? Um, so yeah, like I said, I have just filmed a video all about gaining weight and how I dealt with that. I would say it's just focusing on your end goal. So as soon as I started to see and feel the weight gain, 
I kept just reminding myself of why I was doing it. So the positives basically. So I'm gaining weight because I want to get my period back because I want my body to be as healthy as it can be, be as strong as it can be. I want to have better sleep. I want to feel warmer. Um, I want to have less food focus. All those things, I just kept telling myself, this is why I'm doing it. And and also talking with people on Instagram about it who'd been through a similar thing, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos on it. It kind of felt like I had a support network around me through those alleys. And I think if you can immerse yourself in some of those in a way that is still, you know, it's not too overwhelming for you, but actually is a support, then that can really help. And that really did help me. Your main fitness goal for the next six months. So I'd say I don't have a I don't have a strong fitness goal for the next six months, but definitely in my mind I want to nail technique. So that's something I've really focused on during home workouts is trying to really perfect my squats, deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, all the kind of main compound exercises. I'm really trying to focus on the technique. I think I have been guilty in the past of just increasing weight and you know you, you get you almost get caught up in in trying to think how can I lift heavier I want to be stronger but I was guilty of not necessarily filming my exercises I, I wasn't sure whether the technique was good and so yeah I've just been doing a lot more of filming myself getting some tips on technique so I'd say that's probably one of my main focuses still for the next six months is getting stronger with good form and I think just ultimately building a bit of muscle if I can so I'm going to hover around kind of maintenance surplus calories and if I can build strength and build muscle then great so I want to do things that my body is enjoying exercise in the way I love to exercise and that's kind of my goal really is just to continue that Was your thyroid off from your HA so no, mine wasn't actually. So I had blood tests done just before I went all in, basically just to rule out anything else and almost to confirm the kind of HA diagnosis that I thought I had. And from that, my thyroid levels were pretty normal. Other levels were very low, like my estrogen, FSH, LH, they were all very low, as would be expected when you're not ovulating. Um, but my thyroid function was normal. And I think it is quite important to get this checked out. So. Although I was very confident that I had HA, it's hard to know unless you've had those blood tests. So I do recommend if, if anyone's sort of not quite sure and hasn't any blood tests, to maybe just get some and then you can rule other things out as well. When did you finally decide to gain weight? So that coincides with actually what I've just talked about. So I had the blood tests done and got the results from that. And actually I spoke to a really good doctor on the phone who gave me my blood test results. And he was really honest with me actually. And unlike a lot of other doctors who I think have really just kind of sort of almost fobbed it off or just, oh yeah, I'll come back soon or, you know, not really had much of an explanation. This doctor, he actually just turned around. I've seen this quite a lot in women of your sort of size and, you know, linked with the exercise. So we had a lot of conversation about my general lifestyle. And he said, look, you need to gain weight. If you gain weight, you'll probably get your period back within a few months. And I think from just hearing that from a medical professional gave me kind of the kick of the ass I needed basically. So I'd probably known for about six months that I needed to gain weight. And I knew that I wasn't having my period because of that. Even though it was after coming off the pill, I knew that if I hadn't been on the pill, I probably would have still had the same issue anyway. And then, yeah, so I spoke to the doctor. He basically said, you need to kind of increase your BMI to that healthy fertile zone, I think they call it, which I think is around 23. And my BMI was probably around 18. So I knew I had to increase it quite a bit. And I went home, I spoke to my boyfriend, I kind of discussed it with him and he just said, look, what's stopping you? So yeah, I think from speaking to the doctor and then speaking to my boyfriend and he was really supportive and he was saying, you know, how much he would help me and he was saying the positives as well, which I think obviously is reassuring when you're with someone and you know your body shape and everything's going to change. But he was totally cool with it and I literally just decided from then, so we went on a walk, came back and I was like, right, that's it. I'm just going to 2,500 calories and I'm not 
faffing around. I'm not going to try and slowly increase it. I'm just going to go for it. And actually, I'm so glad I did it that way rather than slowly increasing calories. Because I think for me, jumping in head first, literally making that decision overnight, I think really just gave me the motivation that I needed to just push straight for it rather than, like I say, like a slow, a slow increase in calories. <laughs> this person says, this is a random one, but what do you think is the best sandwich meal for good weight gain? Chicken sandwiches or tuna or cheese? What's the better protein source? Um, so <laughs> I definitely ate a lot of sandwiches and still do eat a lot of sandwiches. I wouldn't say I, there is good foods for weight gain as such. It's not about good or bad foods for weight gain. I would say just eat the foods that you enjoy, but just make sure you're eating enough of them. So for me, like if you, you are talking sandwiches, I absolutely loved uh, tuna mozzarella and pesto panini. And I still love that now and still have it all the time. I have it with like sourdough and just have layers of tuna, mozzarella, pesto, spinach. And yeah, it's just really good. So definitely recommend trying that combo. But yeah, I think, I think sometimes we can be guilty of overthinking it, of what food should I be having to gain weight and what's the best foods. And actually, it is quite simple. It's just a case of having enough calories. So if that means eating two sandwiches, because that means you're getting 600 calories per that meal, and that's roughly what you think would be a good amount for that meal to help total up to your 2,500 calories plus, then have two sandwiches. You know, if that means chicken, cheese, or tuna, I would say they're all good protein sources and I would love all of those in a sandwich. So I think it's just, it's just preference really. Did you find yourself craving more calorie dense foods as you started to eat more? Definitely. So I was very much a clean eater. I ate very healthily. I probably avoided a lot of calorie dense foods or I'd have them in very small amounts. And I think because I avoided them, as soon as I started eating more, my body was definitely craving them more. I still had a very similar diet. So I, I still love eating healthily. That's the food I enjoy. That's me not being restrictive. That's just, I just love healthy food. So I still do eat a lot of that, but I would say around a lot of my healthy meals, I have a lot more calorie dense foods like chocolate bars and I've said this before, but I would do things like, you know, have a pizza one night, burger and chips the next night, doing things like that, that I previously wouldn't have done. I probably would have maybe, you know, had pizza and then had just a slightly healthier meal the next night. And in my mind, I was think I would have been thinking, oh, I'm having too much in the way of unhealthy foods in a row or something daft like that. So as soon as I started increasing calories, I started eating loads more of things like that. Even just eating fattier meats that I probably wouldn't eat, and like chicken thighs. I always had chicken breasts, chicken thighs are, a, you know, a good way to get a bit of extra calories in. Eating lots more things like nuts and avocado. Again, I always ate them, but I'd probably eat smaller amounts, and I was just craving eating larger amounts of those things. So I'd say overall, I craved eating larger amounts of everything. But yeah, calorie dense foods, I did notice that once I started increasing calories, I definitely wanted more of those foods. And I think it's also a good thing because actually it's much easier to get more calories in through eating calorie dense foods because you're not filling your body up on, you know, fruit and veg that don't have a lot of calories in, but actually have a lot of volume. And if you fill yourself up too much on those foods, it can be hard to get the calories in. So one of my tips is to actually yeah, try and aim for quite calorie dense foods within your day so that it's easier to reach a high calorie goal. Were you initially scared of gaining weight too quickly, eating too much? I don't think I was scared, to be honest, no. I think part of you has to just trust your body. Never had any like binge eating issues or anything like that. And I don't think I was scared. I knew I could trust my body. And part of me was willing to be scared by the difference in the calories I was eating. So actually eating 500,000 calories on top of what I was eating. It's quite a lot and part of me was a bit scared of am I going to be able to eat this amount? Am I going to be bloated all the time? Am I going to feel uncomfortable? And I think sometimes, like I say, other people I know have done more of a reverse dieting approach where they just increase calories slowly. But I wasn't scared not to do that approach. I was quite happy to just go for it and basically see what happened. And I knew that even if 
worst case scenario, I gained loads of weight within the first couple of months and I was eating loads more than probably my body needed. I knew at some point that would level out and it has done now anyway. Is it true you shouldn't weigh yourself around your period? I think basically where this comes from is you have a lot of weight fluctuations around your period. So I think it's recommended if you're somebody who gets triggered by the scales and numbers going up, then yes, it probably isn't ideal to weigh yourself around your period because actually you're probably going to look like you've put on, you know, three or four pounds within a day. And that's not just true. It's just due to fluctuations in hormones and things that impact your weight. So, for example, me, two weeks before my period, I often see a drop in weight by two or three pounds and then it increases again. And probably, um, I probably do weigh the most around my period. So I don't think it's about not weighing yourself around your period, but I wouldn't if that all of a sudden, sudden increase in your weight would then panic you, then maybe it isn't a good idea to weigh yourself around your period. Do you think stress added to the loss of your period? Mental stress, no. I've generally been someone who is very chilled. Um, I'm quite a laid back person. I don't really get very stressed. I'm quite lucky in my job that I, it's not a real high stress job. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, it's, it's busy and it can be stressful, but not, not to any kind of extent where it impacts on my mental health or anything like that. So I don't think for me it was about mental stress. I think it was all about physical stress. So it was all about too much exercise, not enough rest, probably not adequate adequate sleep, not adequate calories. I'd say there was stress element, and there's a stress element to everybody who has a loss of a period, but I think for me it was more physical. Whereas I have heard other people where it's more mental. So actually they've put on lots of weight, they've reduced exercise, and they still don't get their period back. And often it's because they've kind of forgotten about the mental stress they're suffering from, whether that's to do with their job or just individual circumstances. But actually that can have a greater impact than some of the other things. But I think it's just so individual when it comes to amenorrhea and, and why you haven't got your period. But for me, it was definitely more physical than mental. What's your dessert? Hmm. So I don't know whether that means what's in my dessert bowl. Because I... <laughs> If you see my Instagram, you'll know I post my dessert bowl all the time, but it's pretty much always the same thing. So if that's what this person was referring to, it's basically just a bowl of yogurt mixed with my protein toffee drops and topped with cereal. So I probably have three different types of cereal, cocoa pops, the my protein crispies and buckwheat puffs, and then loads of berries, always have ice cream, so just whatever I do my fancy. And then, what else do I put on it? Oh yeah, some chocolate syrup, cinnamon, and then I always top it with either a milkshake-y, like a Barbells one or my protein, um, protein shake, or some kefir as well, and it's just amazing. Picture here. Uh, gaining your period with not much weight gain until healthy fat percentage, but not extra. That's a difficult one, I guess, because some people might not need to gain that much weight to get their period back. I think it depends where you're starting from and also depends whether your loss of period is more due to physical stress or mental stress, a combination of the two. And everybody's body's differently. I would say some people need to go past what they feel is a healthy body fat percentage. So again, it's quite subjective. It's like, what is a healthy body fat percentage to you? Because for some people that could be still too lean and other people that can seem quite a lot. I think you've almost got to let go of that control. And I think if you're thinking too much about body fat and not gaining too much weight, you probably won't get your period back. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not to say, like I'm saying, I gained at least 10 pounds before I got my period back. And I'm definitely not saying that everybody needs to do that. Some people might only need to gain five. Some people might need to gain 20 pounds. I think everybody's different. Like I said, it depends where you started from. But for me, if I was asking myself those questions, I'd be thinking of why am I asking myself those questions? So why does the body fat percentage matter? Um, 
and why does the amount I gain matter? You've got to look at it short term, I think, which is what I did, was I might, you know, I was quite happy to accept however much weight I needed to gain and wherever that took me body fat percentage wise, as long as I got my period back. And then I knew in the future, if I wanted to, I may be able to reduce a bit of that body fat or reduce a bit of the weight um, if I got myself to a healthy place. And I think looking at it that way is probably a better way than trying to control it too much now is you're not then really committed to the process, if that makes sense. It's totally individual and I think it's hard to know what, how much weight you need to gain, but I do think it's probably asking yourself why that is important to you. <gasps> Ooh, say by the buzzer. Right, I just need to go turn it off because it's on my oven. 25 minutes. Let me just have a quick look and see if there's a quick one I can answer before we go. Okay, so last one, really quick one. Is creatine and BCAAs okay in recovery and why? Um, yeah, so I continue to take creatine. If you don't know, creatine is a supplement that has been proven to support in strength gains. So if you are the kind of person who's doing strength-based workouts, taking creatine is actually a great supplement that's quite cheap to take. And I continue to take it throughout HA recovery. There's absolutely no evidence that I know of, um, of why you shouldn't take it. I probably didn't need to take it, which is another thing because I wasn't focused really on strength. I wasn't trying to build strength. So I could have quite easily stopped taking it and then just gone back to taking it when I wanted to. But just out of habit, I kept it in basically. And if you want to do the same, then that's absolutely fine. Um, but if you're taking it more to build strength, then you might need, need to just have a little look at your workouts, particularly if you're trying to regain your period. And BCAAs, they're just amino acids, so um, you get amino acids in your food anyway. It's not something you necessarily need to supplement with unless you really want to, unless you just like having them, because you do get all the amino acids you need from food. But if you want to continue, again, absolutely no reason why not, they wouldn't have any adverse effect on recovery whatsoever. Um, yeah, so that was the last question. Any questions that I didn't get around to, I'll definitely make sure I do in my next Q&A. If you've got any questions you want me to answer in my next Q&A, just leave them below. So yeah, if you could subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. I just really want to keep reaching as many people as possible with these videos, particularly for those obviously going through weight gain or hypothalamic amenorrhea, just to provide as much support as I possibly can. So any sharing or liking or subscribing really does mean a lot. And hopefully I'll catch you in a video next week. Thank you. Bye.